Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be taking you through the basics of working with font weights in CSS. Now, I do want to say quickly, if you haven't sort of touched any of this stuff before or if you don't know what I'm talking about, you definitely want to stay and watch today's video because there's some pretty important stuff coming up. Okay, so we're going to be covering quite a few things. The first thing is going to be numeric versus text font weights. We're going to be having a look at how to include custom fonts and styles on your website and as well as a quick warning of what could go wrong if you don't do this correctly. But before jumping into it, today's video is sponsored by Fusion Charts. Fusion Charts is a feature packed library full of responsive and interactive charts, graphs and gauges making it a perfect fit for your next dashboard or data visualization project. Let me show you how easy it is to create a bar chart using Fusion Charts. To install, you can use NPM or you can paste in the HTML using Fusion Charts CDN. To render a chart using Fusion Charts, we can create a new chart container in the HTML. We can now head inside the JavaScript below and create a new instance of Fusion Charts passing through all of the properties and options, including the charts type. We can then pass through the data itself and then lastly call the render method and we're good to go. And as we can see, it was that easy to create a bar chart using Fusion charts. You can also change your theme. I can paste in the fusion theme right there and then provide the theme as being fusion. Then if I go back in the browser, we're going to get this beautiful theme right here. It also integrates nicely with your favorite JavaScript framework such as React, Angular or Vue. So go to fusioncharts.com or click on the link in the description below to begin your free trial today. Okay, so first we're going to have a quick look at the different types of values you can provide to the CSS font weight property. Okay, so you can either choose between a numeric value or a text value. Okay, so on the numeric side, you got between 100 and 900 and you know, as the number increases, so does the thickness of the font. And for the text side, you've got uh, quite a few options. Uh, more commonly, you got either normal or bold. All right. Now, uh, some of these uh, values, for example, normal is the same as 400 and bold is the same as 700. So those are different types of values you can provide to that font weight property, but try and stick to either numerics or a text. Okay, so how do you include custom fonts and different font weights on your website? Well, there are many different options out there, but one of the easier options is to use a service such as Google Fonts, all right? So Google Fonts is gonna allow you to uh, include your different font weights and styles in the head of your HTML. It's gonna serve it to you and you can choose from many different styles. So I'll leave a link to it below, but once you're on this website here, you can simply choose your font using the search function or filter uh, etc once you've chosen your font here you can scroll down and let's say for example I choose the open sans font so once you're inside here there are gonna be sorry they're gonna be uh, many different font weights to choose from all right so for example this font here has support for light 300 up to a extra bold 800 okay so if you know, for example, you're going to be using the regular 400 for your paragraphs and your body text and so on, you can simply select that style right there. If you also know you're going to be using a bold 700 for your headings and titles, you can choose the bold 700 right there. Now, you can also choose to include italics if you wish, but to keep it simple, I'm only going to be choosing here the bold 700 and the, of course, regular 400. All right, so once you've selected your different font weights or different font styles in the sidebar right up here, you're going to see your summary of your selected fonts and families. So right here, I've chosen Open Sans, a regular 400 and a bold 700. So now to make this font available on my website, I'm gonna simply copy all of this HTML right here and include it in the head of the HTML. And then of course in the CSS, I can specify the font family of Open Sans or whatever font you're chosen. And of course now I can also use the font weights of 400 or regular and a font weight of 700 or bold. 
Okay, so I just showed you how to use Google Fonts to include custom fonts on your website. And of course, choose different styles and font weights and things like that. Now, what happens if you don't do this correctly? So let's just say, for example, you include your font and you choose a font weight of something like 400 or normal, all right? So you only choose 400 normal and then you use a bold in your CSS style sheet. What's gonna happen is because the browser hasn't got access to that bold version of your font, it's gonna try and create a bold version. It's gonna try its best to make essentially a fake bold for your font. Now, the bad part about that is, well, it's not going to be what the font artist has intended it to be, and also, it's going to look different, most likely, on different machines. So, for example, it might look different on a Mac compared to a Windows machine due to the ways that, you know, those two operating systems render their fonts, all right? So, definitely make sure that if you, you know, if you know you're going to use a bold font weight for a heading, then definitely include um, a bold font weight you know, in Google Fonts or whatever service you're using. So make sure you do that. And that's basically it. So once again, guys, for a more detailed explanation on font weights in CSS, I've got a whole video dedicated to that. It's called using custom fonts on your websites using Google Fonts. So definitely check that one out if you haven't already done so. And that's all for today, guys. So hope you enjoyed today's video. Drop a like and subscribe if you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.